today I'm going to be teaching you all about endings. Now most writers, they'll spend a lot of time getting the beginning of their story ready with that awesome lead and then they don't really think about their ending. So today you're going to learn about that. I'm going to teach you two different types of endings. There are more than these, but these are just two of them. We have a circular ending, which the brain of a reader really loves, and a question ending, which also the brain of a reader really loves too. So let's take a look at these. Do your stories fall flat at the end? If your stories fall flat, you're going to love this video. Are you curious how to pick the right ending for your story? So if you're somebody who thinks about that, you're going to love this as well. But you're not going to have to look any further because I'm going to teach you about these two different types of ends. Let's take a look at a circular ending and a question ending. All right. Endings are important. Many writers work hard on getting their readers' attention at the beginning, like I already said. They're writing with fancy leads, they're, taught, they're leading with three questions, they're starting with the main thought, they're really engaging their readers. But I'm here to show you two ways that you can make your writing explode at the end, and that will make readers want to come back for more of your stories and really feel fulfilled when they're finished reading them. So here's how you can do it in your writing. Let's take a look. Here is an author's writing right here. The first one we're gonna take a look at is called a circular ending. A circular ending is when you reoccur a detail from the beginning of the story, like right here, and you reoccur it again at the end of the story, right at the ending. So it allows the reader to hear a, a detail at the beginning and then they hear it again at the end in context of the story. So let's take a look at how she does that. Because here she talks about aquaphobia, and here she talks about anti-water, which means the same thing in her writing. So let's take a look at the student's work. Here's the beginning. Here's the first part of this. Here's the first part of this student's writing. It's called Ozzy's Little Swim. Some people have arachnophobia, the fear of spiders. Some have barophobia the fear of bears, and of, of course. And some people have people phobia, the fear of people. But in this particular story, Ozzy, my cat, has aquaphobia. Or at least he does now, she says. He used to be fearless with anything he, anything he was doing. He was a daredevil. Always getting into trouble, that Ozzy, for example, about two years ago, it all started with me and my brother, Jared, and my dad sitting at the dinner table. All of the smells were entering our noses as we, as we, um, did, as we were at the ice cream parlor. All of those smells only making her, my stomach growl even louder. Waiting for her dinner to be served, I watched my cat on top of the refrigerator, which is unfortunate next which is unfortunate because it was next to the huge fish tank with the gigantic slits on top of the fish tank it was long enough and the slits were big enough for Ozzy the cat to even fit into it just like Ozzy it's fine I thought Ozzy couldn't be dumb enough to jump into that height that height just to get a fish right but I was wrong as I walked as I wolfed down my um, Fat, juicy pork chops, so tender and thick and oh so good, splash! I jumped and practically choked on my pork chops. My dad was looking frantically around, searching for where the splash came from. Searching, 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 searching until he found what he was looking for. Poor Ozzy had actually tried to get a fish and slipped, falling into his doom. By now, my dad had I, by now my dad had Ozzy cradled in his arm, soothing him. I rushed over with a towel to help dry Ozzy off, and that is how Ozzy became anti-water cat. So you can see at the ending, she uses that word anti-water, which is a reoccurring detail from the beginning of the story when she was talking during her lead about barophobia, arachnophobia, peopleophobia. Some of those were made up. But you get the point of what she was trying to do. She referred to her cat as being aquaphobia, which means fear of water. 
So she reoccurs that detail at the end, and she tells her, her readers again, she uses, instead of using aquaphobia again, which she could have used aquaphobia again, she used anti-water, which is the same thing. That's called using a reoccurring detail. So she used that aquaphobia at the beginning and anti-water at the end. That's called, a re, that's called a circular ending. It starts with a detail and it ends with a detail. It kind of creates a circle in your reader's minds. Try that one in your writing. Let's take a look at the next one. This is called a question ending. This is one of my favorite ones. Let's take a look at a student's work. This one's called end with a question. All right? And this one is where you have a story, and then at the end, at the very end, you leave your readers with a question that has something to do with the main event or the main part of your story. So let's take a look at this one. This is called The Big Bike Crash. Here's the first part. Do you get that feeling when you ride a bike fast that you think you are invincible? Well, I did once, and I paid the price for it too. I wasn't a, it wasn't a pretty sight, believe me. So let me give you some advice. Never think you're invincible. One summer day in the heart of West Virginia, my cousin Tyler and I were playing, and we were only about six years old. We were riding our bikes in a field by my grandma's house. I remember Tyler saying, hey, want to go ride down and hit the, the downhill grass bump, the grass ramp? I said, sure, let's do it. So we started to push our bikes up the hill because it was too steep to pedal up. After we got up the steep hill, we then began to ride our bikes up the second hill. So you can tell we were pretty high up. Once we made it to the top, we rode down the hill several times. Each time we rode down the hill, we went faster and faster. It wasn't until the sixth time heading down that things got sketchy. Tyler went down in front of me, but he swerved off and didn't hit the ramp. Woo, he missed the ramp. I didn't swerve. I was ready. I held on nice and tight to the handlebars. Sweat poured down my face. My heart was pumping 90 miles per hour, about the same speed I was going. It was almost time for the ramp. I pedaled faster and faster. I lifted my front tire at the edge of the ramp. I flew like a bird. Then I landed like a rock, hitting the ground and shattering. I flew over my handlebars. My head bounced off the ground. I immediately stood up and had a huge nod on my head. Ooh. I don't know how I managed to avoid the hospital, but I did. And here's the ending. Wait for it. She's going to ask you a question that has something to do with bicycle ramps and wrecks. That day I learned something about invincibility. Did you? <gasps> Remember when she talked about invincibility at the beginning of the story? She brought that question back. Today I learned something about invincibility. Did you? That leaves your readers wanting more. So she learned something about inv invincibility. Did you? Can you do this in your writing? I think you can. So think about how, what you can do at the end of your story. Make it a circular. Take that detail, bring it again at the end, or finish with a question.